So for today's episode, we are going to be installing a beautiful fountainscape using the scalloped urns and taking this space from this to this. Huh? Now we're gonna show you how we put it together. We are gonna build a pondless waterfall. The easiest way to learn something is to teach it. We are rocking and rolling on this pond. We appreciate you guys tuning in. What is up everybody? It is Chris at Team Aquascape. We are down here just south of Fort Lauderdale, Florida at a beautiful residence. Chris, the homeowner, has about three acres that is just pristinely landscaped. But what's even more cool about it is all the exotic wildlife that he has. He has birds, he's got monkeys, he's got goats, he's got turkeys, he has koi fish. It's just a cornucopia of life here. I'm super excited that we're able to bring him into the aquascape lifestyle and add that little breath of life that only a water feature can do. We are currently at the winter retreat where we have a bunch of CACs and aspiring CACs working on three different projects at a variety of skill levels. Today, I am leading the Fountainscape project. We have a ton of hungry contractors ready to learn, ready to get their hands dirty. You guys ready to go meet them? Let's go. Thank you all so much obviously for taking a part in the the winter retreat one thing i will ask is if you have a question please 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 do not hesitate to stop me and ask okay this is you know an entry level water feature class just i'm an open book i am here for all of you i really really appreciate you guys investing in yourselves and allowing us to help you with that so please feel free to stop me at any point okay does that sound fair it's gonna be a fun hands-on event we're gonna do a fountainscape right we've got the three scalloped urns the different sizes i believe what greg said is we install more water features as as a unit as a team as a company as our local market division in chicago than anybody else out there so we've been through and been doing this for a very very long time and we've worked through all the growing pains right so you're going to take away some of those golden nuggets right we were talking last night just about some of the organizational things right so today's not limited just to how to install a fountainscape but it's how have we screwed up and how are we continuing to try and fix it chris do you want to introduce yourself this is chris he is the homeowner and you are the creator of this incredible grounds that we are on so thank you so much for being here do you want to address the group and well thanks for coming i think it's very cool everyone showed up and um oh oh great yeah here we go now you come out <laughs> early greg so it's funny because there's so much stuff going on here it's like what more do you add but the idea of being a landscaper of a small vignette you can tuck it anywhere you know, I see everything is a painting that never stops. The garden isn't done until you sell the house or it burns down. I just think it's cool to walk the grounds and think, you know what? I hate this spot. It's low. I've added dirt. The grass doesn't grow right. A dead, ugly spot. Something would be cool here. So to me, as a landscaper, it's fun to scape a property that seems done and say, you know what? You can fit something cool right there. How long have you lived here? I bought this property maybe 16, 17 years ago and there was pretty much nothing here. So as a, for instance, this is how like nutty I am. There's two palm clumps here. These are actual date palms. Those are from dates I ate that I bought at Publix and I planted the pits. <laughs> so I am patient and like Chicago, watching it grow. <laughs> well, it's a little cold there. <laughs> so anyway, everything started here from nothing. I like seeing things grow and I'm okay with it taking time. Anyway, thanks guys. Thank you. Um, again, another hand for Chris. Real quick. Very, very generous. Thank you, sir. So good. Let's, let's respect the property. Um, let's have a lot of fun today. We're going to go ahead and connect these bed lines and kind of spray out the area where we're going to strip out the grass. The grass will come up relatively easily. It will go in the green garbage cans. We have two wheelbarrows here. We have that one and that one. We're going to fill that with the soil. You're going to hit rock real quick. Sweet. 
Nice. Well, good. That's good to hear. Good thing we're doing small aqua blocks. So once we get the grass out of here, we'll go ahead and lay down the 15 panels, spray out the perimeter of the reservoir. Go ahead and get that in, locate where the pump vault's going to be. We have a 20 by 25 liner, which is more than enough to catch all the splash, allow us to do some of those creative edges, that kind of stuff. I have all of the bulk material in that trailer. Thankful that I have all of you because we're going to need the hands to get it over here. We have no tree dolly, so we'll have to do some fabric slings, that kind of stuff. Really, really work together as a team. Cool? All right, where did that paint go? So right now we're doing kind of the first step, which is getting the site prepped for excavation. There's existing grass. So what we wanted to do, because it's been recently treated, is we're gonna go ahead and just strip off all the grass and get rid of it and throw it right in the garbage because it's not edible or, or usable to feed the animals with. So we're gonna get rid of that, lay out our aquablock panels to show the size of the reservoir, spray paint everything out, and then start digging. do would be to lay out the aqua block panels. I like to lay out the panels before we even put the aqua blocks together. That way we can configure the 15 aqua blocks the way we see fit. We may run them this way or we may run them that way. And I will show you guys the construction of the aqua block. All right, so we'll go ahead and start here. Let's do full shovel depths. What are you calling down here, turtle shovels? All right, as I said, contractors were hungry and ready to get dirty. Currently, we're just getting underway and I think they're loving it. Well, at least some of them are. We were running into a few roots from this live oak, which shouldn't be an issue, but a majority of the soil has to get off site. What I mean by that is we have to relocate it on the property. While this is happening, I'll take another group over and start showing them how to properly construct the aqua blocks and then talk about why it's so important to construct those the right way. Uh, seat for the peg inside the hole on the aqua block panel. Um, this one it looks pretty good. So now that I've got the A panels are being held together by the four interior panels. The reason I like to do it this way is because now these long skinny side panels fit right on there. Right? So rather than doing the four interior panels and then putting these on and then this on, I've just found after doing it in a combination of steps, that is the most efficient way for me and the way I teach our teammates to put together aqua blocks. Cool? Who wants to try one? Anybody? Go ahead, get in there. The guys and girls are kicking butt with the excavation. They're almost complete. So right now, I took another group, the people who weren't in, in the hole, teaching them how to put together the aqua blocks. You have three different size panels. So I just got done walking through with them the construction process, the steps on how we teach our guys at Team Aquascape on how to put the aqua blocks together efficiently so that we can keep their profit margins up and keep the job moving. is slowing down just a little bit. We ended up running into coral, just like Chris, the homeowner, said we would. You can hear the demo hammer behind me. Fortunately, we had the right tool for the job, but unfortunately, we're kind of slowing down the excavation process to keep us from moving forward.
All right, so we've got the urns placed, which was a big deal. Chris was very particular as to how he wanted to see this collection of scalloped urns sitting nestled into his garden. He wanted them very specific heights, the spacing, all that stuff. I love the way it's turning out. Right now, what we're finishing up doing is just running all the plumbing. This is all the behind the scenes stuff. It takes a lot of time, but it's what's gonna make it look great and amazing afterwards. We've got our lights tucked into the tops of the urns. We've got our inch and a half pipe bored up through the center. We've got our manifold almost complete. Once we do that, we're home free. We're going to start with all of the beautiful stuff, all the artistry with the decorative boulders and the gravel. So one of the coolest things about projects like this is all of the people, the enthusiasm, but more importantly, the willingness to work together, even when people don't know everybody. It's amazing how it feels like an old fashioned barn raising. Guys are just working together, side by side, hand in hand, and just getting the job done. So now the real magic is going to start happening. We've got the plumbing essentially finished. Now we're gonna start working in some of these big landscape stones, boulders in through here. We've got plenty of this moss rock to work with. We've got some ledge stone pieces, and we've got some smaller chunks over there, and then a combination of the big gravel. So this is the fun part, now that all of the infrastructure is in place. See, we've got our manifold back over there with all of our ball valves, and we are good. Are so close to being done. I feel like I say that a lot in our videos, but we really freaking are this time. We just got done installing the pump. What we have on this project is a SLD, which stands for solids handling, 4,000 to 7,000 gallon per hour pump. The neat thing about it is that's plenty of pump to be able to give us the volume we're looking for the three respective urns. What I love even more about it though, is it's got that versatility to be able to be turned up and turned down via either the Aquascape app or a handheld remote. So you can really dial in the aesthetic but also the audible energy. So we've got the gravel now being rinsed. You know, use our marketing materials and send back to you. What the frick? <laughs> payback, just remember payback. Anyways, so we are super, super close to getting done. You saw the gravel getting rinsed. We've got the finishing touches. We're gonna work in some plants. Edges are virtually done. Once that gravel is completely rinsed off, we're gonna go ahead and fill this basin up and then fire this sucker up, fine tune the flow, turn it off, and then we're gonna let Chris go ahead and do the honors and plug everything in. Nah! So we are at the point in the project now, which is the most anticipated step, and that is turning the pump on. I saw Chris, he was around here somewhere. There, oh, he, is. there he is. So Chris, are you ready? I am ready. Sure. The reservoir is full, Get we've got done. the gravel cleaned off. It's gonna look a little murky, but the water's gonna clear up. I think you're really gonna love this. What do you guys think, you excited? <laughs> yeah. Nice, yes! Good job, nice congratulations. Yeah. Welcome to the Aquascape family. You're gonna be enjoying living the Aquascape lifestyle, Chris. How fun was this episode? 
you got to see a bunch of people that are newbies, but also a bunch of people that have done this before. And we worked side by side, one hand helping the other, get an incredible project done for an incredible customer. Thank you so much, Chris. Again, How about a hand for Chris, everybody? enjoyed this episode make sure you let us know in the comments section and if you're not already subscribed to the channel please do so hit the little notification bell every Tuesday Thursdays and Sundays 9 a.m. Central Standard Time we're coming out with brand new team aquascape content till next time thank all of you and thank all of you